Okay, in this tutorial we're going to cover metal volcanoes. There's three different types of metal volcanoes you might have to deal with. Gold volcanoes, copper volcanoes, and iron volcanoes. And that's the difficulty level in that order. Gold is the easiest, copper is the medium, and iron is the hardest. The reason for that is the actual properties of the specific metals. Specific heat capacity of gold is 0 0.129. It's really low. It doesn't actually hold a lot of heat. So even though all the volcanoes kick out roughly the same amount of material at the exact same temperature, since gold has such a low heat capacity, it's much easier to cool. Uh, iron, on the other hand, iron has a much higher specific heat capacity. So I think gold's about 20-30% uh, of the heat capacity of iron. So that's why gold is much easier to cool and much easier to work with and requires far less effort. However, this design is here to it will work on any volcano you throw it at. Uh, I've built in a few safety features just to make sure that no matter what you do, you can just throw this down around any volcano and you're good to go. Well, any metal volcano. And to just give you a perspective of how much heat this takes, the average volcano will spit out about 275 grams of material per second on average over its life cycle. It can be as low as 50 grams per second and as high as 500 grams per second. They're the maximum ranges, but it averages out at about 275, depending on the volcano you get and the RNG. Now, an average volcano of 275 grams, if it was, say, an iron volcano, it would take you 21 Huizworts to cool it down and make the metal get the metal down to about zero degrees. For a gold volcano, it takes about for the exact same volcano, but made out of gold that spit at the exact same amount, same temperature, you're looking at about six Weezworts. So there's a huge difference between dealing with an iron volcano and dealing with a gold volcano. And now, how do we actually tame these things? Well, first thing we do is we just, uh, we've walled this in here, and this is a vacuum. And this gold is going to, as the volcano erupts, the gold will fall down here and land on this wolframite door. The reason we're using wolframite is wolframite has the highest heat, uh, highest melting point of any of the mechanical doors you can build. Even tungsten doesn't have a melting point this high. This is the only door that can potentially withstand heating up to the same temperature as the magma output. It's unlikely to happen, but we just want to use wolframite to be absolutely perfectly safe. Additionally, the insulation tiles around here are made of obsidian. Obsidian is the only insulated tile that has a heat capacity or a, a melting point that's actually higher than the, the liquid coming out of this volcano. If you were to take, say, an igneous rock tile, it actually has a melting point of 1400 degrees. That's not going to be able to survive the temperature of gold if it actually sucks up the heat. And because we are using temperature shift plates here, they have the potential to heat up these surrounding tiles. So we want to be absolutely extra safe here. So obsidian for anything that's going to be touching the actual metal, it's the magma itself with insulated tiles. For the doors, wolframite, and for the metal tiles here, we're using tungsten. Tungsten is the only metal tile that can handle it. It's got the highest melting point of any of the metal tiles. Um, so that said, the metal will roll down here, and it will sit on top of this, and this temperature shift plate made of diamond will move the heat into the tile. These steel doors will engage, and they will allow the heat to transfer over here into the steam, and the steam turbine will eat, this, eat the heat. Basically a heat deletion. Once this, once the steam in here goes below 230 degrees and a specific time of day is reached, this door will open and the gold will drop down. But that will only happen if the steam in here is below 230 degrees, which will mean the temperature of this gold or whatever metal you have here will usually be about 270 degrees. That's the coolest it can be before it will be allowed to drop through. Otherwise, the steam in here would be too hot for it. And then it drops down into this second layer. Now, the only reason this second layer exists because it is effectively identical to the top layer, it just has a slightly different time of day, is there is a rare possibility that when this door opens, maybe this volcano just suddenly decides to drop a big blob of molten metal down here. It's highly unlikely because the door is only open for 0.5% of the day, and that would only happen if there was no hot metal in here already, but it is a possibility. So to prevent that, a second door was installed, this ensures that at no point is there a complete gap from top to bottom where the metal could just instantly pour down. We don't want that. Anyway, these metals will be trapped here until they're cooled below 270 degrees, at which point the steam in here will have chilled off enough to allow this uh, temperature sensor to go, yeah, it's cold enough, let them out. 
at that point they drop down here and this is all a vacuum in here because this is a waterlock seal so they'll drop down here and then shortly after they drop down here they will be picked up by this auto sweeper and dumped into well this conveyor loader the reason we put them in a conveyor loader loader is conveyor loaders loaders interact with the surrounding environment for heat purposes far better than say a storage chest or anything along those lines if i was to put them into a storage chest they would not exchange heat with the surrounding area quite so well so by putting them into one of these conveyor loaders they rapidly drop in temperature which is what we want because this is cooled water and the water is being cooled by this aqua tuner and the heat given off by the aqua tuner is being destroyed by the steam turbine so once the gold is in there it will stay in there for a full cycle that's because we have hooked up a timer to it here Basically, after this door is open and drops down here, auto loader loads it up, but this loader will not actually activate until just before this uh, door is about to drop the next load of gold. That gives it a whole cycle to sit there and dump heat. And as it's dumping heat, it becomes cooler and cooler and gets down to the point where we can actually utilize it. Then at that point, once it activates, it will go along this conveyor rail here and get dumped into these conveyor receptacles. At which point these will pick them up and dump them into this storage container for use by our duplicates. So I know there's a lot of uh, automation going on here, so I'll try and uh, cover it as best I can. Uh, this is just a standard heat deletion steam turbine setup. Two gas pumps that recirculate the steam and just keep deleting all the heat. This over here is just a couple of AND gates. If the temperature in here is 230 degrees or lower, and the correct time of day is hit, open the door. Currently the temperature in here is well above 230 degrees, so that it's going to keep deleting heat until it gets down below that, until that point that gold is going nowhere. And as you can see it's slowly bleeding out heat, bleeding it out, bleeding it out. It'll soon be down to a, a decent temperature. This one here, exact same thing, it's actually hooked up to the exact same temperature sensor. So it, when it detects that it's 230 degrees in here, and a slightly different time of day, as in the opposite time of day is hit. You'll see here it's one is set to just at midnight and the other one is set to midday. When it hits a completely different time of day, it goes fine and it's the gold drop down. Once the gold is down there, it gets dumped into the conveyor loader for a full cycle. If you look here, uh, this is the actual, this automation is hooked up to the auto sweeper. So that auto sweeper will turn on at this time of day. And then the conveyor loader won't actually activate until this time of day, which means the clock will have to go all the way around. We'll get almost a full cycle of cooling inside here. This will usually take it from 270 degrees to 40 degrees tops, at which point when this uh, automation kicks in and this actually activates, it will get conveyed through this cool water until the other side. We're well below 40 degrees whenever we get out of here, no matter what type of material you're using. And then this is also set up on a... A time schedule as well. This is just set to come on when no th none of the other devices in here are active. None of the doors, none of the sweepers, nothing like that. Now one of the reasons I've got set it so that it comes on at a different time to all the rest of the items is I want this whole thing to be runnable on a single kilowatt, uh, two kilowatt wire. Uh, if we look at the two kilowatt wire you'll see here the energy consumers are 2.52 kilowatts which is bad but this door will never be open at the same time as this door, and th these two doors will never be used at the same time as this loader, and this uh, sweeper and this sweeper will also never be on. So all five of these items, only one of them will ever be on at any time. This means the maximum power that can ever be drawn on the wire at any one time is 2080 watts. Now I was worried that might cause overloads, but I torture tested this on a, on a test map, and it had zero problems and zero overloads over about 60 cycles. But it might just be that these doors open and close so quickly because they're the two that will put it over. It might be they open and close so quickly the, the game doesn't have time to register that it's an overload. That could change in the future and it might need a redesign, but for the time being it seems to be completely stable. Now, one of the interesting quirks of this though is this heat is running the steam turbine. We have to pump the steam back down, but because the heat is being generated by an outside force as opposed to just uh, an aqua tuner, which is what you would be using in a, a normal heat deletion device, you'd actually be powering an aqua tuner to generate the heat. This actually generates enough electricity to pay for some of all, all this energy usage. Um, I was 
in my torture test map when I was checking it out, it, the amount of energy generated was somewhere between about 35 to 65 percent of the power needs of this, depending on the cycle, were being actually produced by the steam turbine. However, we need some way to store that energy. Otherwise, it's going to turn on maybe the aqua tuner's not on at the time or something like that, and the energy would just be wasted. So there's a tiny little bit more automation. I know there's a lot of automation in this build. And it's this power shut off here. Uh, if you'll check here, this has basically gone off to our power spine. And this here is a power shut off. And this power shut off is hooked up to a battery. So when the battery hits 20% power, this will actually activate and engage power. So we will draw power from the main grid when the battery power in here goes below 20%. Once battery power hits 40%, we disconnect from the main grid. What this effectively results in is that no matter what, these batteries will not go above 40% each, meaning we'll have 60% space in both batteries. That way, when this steam turbine kicks in and actually generates electricity, which it's about to do now, actually. Oh no, it's just coming, coming down off one. But here we are now. It will actually top up these batteries. Now, I tried using just a single battery. However, I would still have too much overflow sometimes and some of the energy would be lost. At this rate, you actually manage to cut down on the power consumption of this from somewhere around, it, uh, the average is about 550 to 600 watts to keep running this on an iron volcano, a very powerful iron volcano. Uh, with this engaged and with this little power management, you can actually reduce that power consumption down by, well, about 45% on average. So this is actually quite energy efficient, no matter what you throw at it. Uh, the only downside, of course, would be there's some diamond temperature shift plates here. There's tungsten, there's steel, there's wolframite. There's a lot of different materials involved in this. And you have to create a vacuum to start. Now, at the end of the video, I have a, a sort of a quick time lapse or a fast forwarded video of me actually putting this together and making some beautiful mistakes that you can enjoy. Uh, so I'll play that at the end. But for the time being, I'm just going to go over to uh, a test map where I torture test this design and I'll show you this in full swing on a, a monstrous iron volcano. This is the nastiest iron volcano I could find. It ejects an enormous amount of iron in a very short period of time, making it one of the most difficult types to deal with. This design ate it for breakfast, not a problem. So iron will flow down here. As you can see that iron right now is 306 degrees. Temperature in here is 200 and... 40. It's not low enough yet. It has to hit 230 degrees before it will allow those doors to open. Now, this can result in a few awkward scenarios where this will just keep spitting out metal at the wrong time and the doors won't open for several cycles. So this will be intermittent depending on how nasty, let's say, your volcano is. Also, uh, this design, I hadn't actually implemented the full system yet. This was, uh, let's just say it was the beta. So that's why it's a, it looks a little bit odd and it's missing some of the pieces. But um, yeah, where is it? Yeah, we're just coming up on the time of day. We're still, no, still not good enough. So as you can see, even though the metal's almost there and the temperature is almost quite right, it's still not gonna drop the metal in time. And by the time it is cool enough, another eruption is going to happen. Oh, this here is the liquid pipe thermal sensor. This is set to keep this water here at 10 degrees. That is actually powered by this aqua tuner up here. Now, one of the reasons I put the aqua tuner there, uh, YouTube user Mike Hank pointed out that uh, I had my liquid thermo sensor too close to, uh, the, or not close enough to the device last time on one of my previous videos. What I've discovered is when this sensor activates, sometimes the water will, the water bubble in the tile will still get to move one tile more before the deactivation of the machine takes effect. So what I've done here is I've just actually put it one tile away from the measuring point that makes sure that even if it miss a blobs gets by, it'll still stay here long enough to cool off the rest of the way. This has made the system quite stable. Oh, and another thing you can do if you really want to turn the energy efficiency up to, well, 11, there is a few ways you can do that. You can, of course, flood this up here with oxygen or hydrogen and force the steam back down again. You can put in door pumps. Or if you want to do something very simple, what you could do is just get some insulated tiles and block off some of the steam turbine inputs. What this does is it reduces the amount of steam required to activate it. And if you add on, say, a third battery, 
steel. At this point, the entire process becomes self-sustaining. As in the amount of energy produced by this will actually be more than the amount of energy consumed. So it will actually become a net en energy producer and you will stop drawing energy off your main grid. Well, until this goes into its dormancy phase and the batteries decay a bit. Now, there's an eruption. Piles on more metal. Doors keep engaging and disengaging to destroy the heat. As you can see there, all the batteries are now fully charged. This system will never actually run out of power anymore. You can do that if you don't mind. This is uh, an exploit, or it's not an exploit or a cheat, it's just an oversight, I think, by the developers. These things should not still function at full capacity when the inputs are blocked, but currently they do. So even with four input blocks, four inputs blocked, it now only takes two kilos of steam to run this, and these two gas pumps can keep up with it 50% of the time, so you're outputting a kilowatt of, well, yeah, an average of a kilowatt of power a second, and the gas pumps only take 280 or 480 watts of that, so you're coming up with quite a surplus. With a little automation, you could dump that back onto your grid if you wanted to. Oh, as you can see here, the iron dropped down, and it's now in this case, and you'll see it's actually quite hot still. That's because this one has not implemented the actual shipping loader. Let's see, conveyor loader. And once we shook it over there, watch as the temperature rapidly plummets. That's why we use conveyor loaders. Uh, make them out of copper or gold, they have the best uh, conductivity. And make sure there's a diamond temperature shift plate behind them, just to be extra careful. And they should run just fine. Oh, I stole the idea for using the conveyor loader to dump heat from a video by LifeGrow. Uh, he did a, he had a volcano management tutorial as well, uh, an old one, and it, it used these quite effectively for that. So that's where I stole that idea from. Uh, this here is my second map, or the, uh, the beta, I suppose. Uh, this one here has most of the features implemented. The only thing missing is these uh, pipes don't extend far enough to cool the batteries as well. I extended those later to make sure that I could provide chill for the batteries. It just cut down on cooling requirements or putting in an alternative cooling solution. Now, right now, yep, both lights are green. This should be ready to drop the moment that hits, actually. First off, though, this is now activated because the clock timer has hit the correct period of time. And if we look here, this stuff is coming onto the rail at about 33.6. Uh, time I get to the other end, it's 23.5. So we're dropping quite a bit of temperature as we go through this water. The conveyor rail system is actually quite good at doing that. However, I experimented with the thought of putting in multiple layers of water. It just it, it resulted in an awful lot more complication. It still comes out plenty cold enough. For example, I think 23 degrees is the hottest it is. That's perfectly fine. And this next piece of metal will be co even chilled even more. As you can see, yeah, it... The smaller the amount of metal that makes it through, the actual faster it cools it as well. That is ridiculous. So, uh, next up I'll be showing you how I actually built this. I'll just have a quick fast forwarded video so you can have a, an eye at what's going on. Uh, as well as that, I've included the save game for this map, the torture test map, and the actual, uh, my live playthrough that actually contains the, the built one. So if you want to go through, check any settings, see how it's configured, you're welcome to do so. Mm -hmm.